Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar on computer and network security with a focus on virtual machine labs that form part of our courseware in this discipline. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce you to our two guest speakers, Mike Kretzis and Gaurav Malik, both senior lecturers in computer science and informatics at the University of East London. So today we'll be looking how Cengage Computer Science aligns with career paths. Also seeing how our products um, fit with the CompTIA certification pathways. Then we'll move on to Mike and Gurav's experience using MindTap as Coursera, part of their course at the University of East London. If you have any questions during the session, please post them in the Q&A and we'll address them at the end. So learning solutions from Sengage for computer science helped deliver courses to students looking, looking towards these career paths. In recent years, there's been a trend towards network information and cloud security as these sectors continue to grow. So as mentioned, uh, many, of, many of our advanced computing products are aligned with the CompTIA, CompTIA certifications. As you will see, I've highlighted the relevant certifications in blue that our products fit with. So notably in the core or introductory section, we have the A+, which is the foundation, onto Network Plus for IT infrastructure. And most relevant for this session is the Security Plus, which Mike can go over and speak more of. So looking at entry-level cybersecurity, secure network systems and software, and how to implement these solutions. Then the more advanced pathways with Linux Plus and Cloud Plus for networking. And then finally, for the cybersecurity uh, pathway, we have the CSER, so cybersecurity analysts. The CompTIA certifications are updated every three years, and this more or less fits with our publishing cycle, so we're able to stay up to date with the latest developments. It should also be noted that CompTIA, from April 2020, CompTIA introduced online testing. Those students can complete their testing from anywhere without having to book into a centre. So with that, I'll pass you over to Mike and Gurad, who are going to talk about their experience using CompTIA Security Plus at the University of East London for their module in computer network security. Thanks very much, James. So I'll start by sharing my screen. Okay, uh, James, you might just need to stop sharing so then it gives me the control. Yeah, thanks very much. Right, thank you. Um, and can I just ask, uh, James, are you able to see my slide deck? Yes, yeah, perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, thanks very much for the opportunity, James. Uh, so I'll start by just introducing ourselves, and then um, me and Mike will go through the slides and talk a little bit about what how we did it at UEL. So as I said, we'll talk a little bit about us. We'll talk about you know computing at UEL just to give you the context of how the module sits within a wider portfolio. I think it's good to see, give some historical context as well, you know, like how we used to do things in the past and Mike will take you on a journey, not too long, on how things did work in the past. Then we'll talk to you about how we started using MindTap and our future plans. So um, as James says, so my name is Gaurav. I'm also the course leader for the degree apprenticeship uh, courses that we run at UEL. And I'm also, in, you know, besides the security uh, modules, I also teach on cloud computing modules. So I'll pass over to Mike. Mike, you might just need to unmute yourself. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you very much, Gaurav. And, and good morning to everyone, or possibly good afternoon, if perhaps we're being joined by people uh, from overseas. Let me introduce myself. My name's Mike Kretzis. I'm also a senior lecturer here at the University of East London. 
I'm the course leader of uh, the largest computing degree here, uh, the computer science degree, which has approximately 400 students. It's actually one of the largest courses in the entire university. And in addition to leading the course, uh, I teach a number of modules. I look after the final year projects, but I also lead uh, a level six cybersecurity module, uh, which is where we've been using MindTap. And it's that module which we would like to share our experiences with you today. So if Gaurav, we could move to uh, the next slide. So I hope, ladies and gentlemen, you'll forgive me if I just spend a couple of minutes saying uh, a few words about computing at UEL, because it's a very special institution. It's worth noting that we are, uh, first and foremost, uh, a what we call a teaching-led institution. So the vast bulk of our income is derived uh, from students' tuition fees. So ensuring that the students have a positive experience is a very important part of what we do. And I'm pleased to say that for the past few years, we've been consistently ranked near or at the very top of the various student satisfaction surveys that are published uh, annually in the UK, culminating, in fact, in 2019, when we were ranked first in the UK. And I think that's quite an achievement, given that there are well over 100 institutions here in the UK that offer computer science degrees. We're also an institution that uh, prides itself on providing opportunities to uh, groups of students from traditionally underrepresented groups. So uh, a large proportion of our students come from families uh, in which you know, the, those students are the first uh, individuals to go to university. So we have a good reputation for reducing inequalities. We're also, you know, we recently uh, ranked globally eighth for gender equality. Um, we're a unique university in terms of our location. So we're based uh, in the east of London, I guess the clue's in the name. Uh, and that's a, you know, uh, a part of the world that's developing rapidly. So there's lots of work going on. Um, and all of, those, uh, all of that work provides a range of opportunities for the institution and its students. Having said that we are a teaching-led institution, all of my colleagues are involved in research and a lot of that research is uh, recognized internationally. We're a big department, uh, a big school. We have approximately 2,700 students across a range of programs in computing, engineering, architecture, and visual arts. Uh, and one other thing I'll just mention here is that we were in 2019 voted the best performing academic te uh, team within the institution. So that's uh, um, a big seal of approval from our peers within UEL. And it's, again, something which we're very proud of. So that's enough about, I think, uh, uh, UEL as an institution. So let me just say then a few words about the various degrees that we offer here at UEL. So on the left hand side, you'll see a list of the undergraduate uh, programs that we offer. So you can see we've got a number of them, including a, a dedicated cybersecurity uh, course, BSc Honours in Cybersecurity Network. Having said that, all of our programs include elements of cybersecurity. So to take an example, our computer science degree has a final year module, uh, cybersecurity module, which is the module that we're uh, going to talk about today. That's also a part of the applied, uh, applied computing degree as well. So we also have a range of uh, courses at MSc level. And we, there again, we have a dedicated MSc in information security and digital forensics. So cybersecurity is a very important part of what we do here at the University of East London. So what I'd like to do now <clears throat> is to move on and to say a few words about uh, the module in which we're making extensive use of MindTap. So the module title is Computer and Network Security. It's a level six module, so for the benefit of those participants who are joining from overseas, uh, level six is equivalent to the final year of an undergraduate degree. Now, um, the module really uh, attempts to achieve two aims. Firstly, it's 
designed to provide our students with a detailed understanding of the methods, tools and techniques that attackers will use to compromise computer system and network security. So it's very important that the students have opportunities to see how those uh, attacks actually work in practice. And clearly MindTap is a great platform that enables us to do that. But in addition to understanding um, the tools and techniques that attackers use, we also have to focus closely on the various tools, techniques and mechanisms that are available to system administrators, network administrators and cybersecurity analysts so that they can secure networks. So a very large part of the module is dedicated to covering you know, those tools and techniques. And again, it's extremely important that the students have an opportunity to gain hands-on experience of using those tools. So we've been running uh, a cybersecurity type module for many years now, 15 years, probably even longer. And throughout that time, the module has been based on the uh, Security Plus syllabus. We're not actually a CompTIA center, but what we do do is encourage our students to take the Security Plus certification once uh, they've completed the module. So in, within the module, we actually cover uh, 11 out of the 15 modules. So the module is a one-term module. It, includes 12 weeks of teaching. So we have a one week introduction followed by 11 weeks. And in each one of those weeks, we cover one of the modules. So we don't have quite have time to cover absolutely everything that's included in the Security Plus uh, schedule, uh, sorry, syllabus, but we do cover the bulk of it. And we do encourage our students to pursue uh, certification. So that's a little bit of background about the module itself. Uh, now what I'd like to do is just to say a few words about how we've run our labs. So the labs, the practical sessions, are an extremely important part uh, of what we do here. Uh, and until um, last year, what we would do is provide everything that was required, the hardware, the software, all of that would have been provided in-house. So the, the, the configuration and the maintenance of all of our systems was provided uh, in our own labs and supported by our own technicians. So one of the things we used to do, we made extensive use of uh, VMware products. So we use VMware Workstation to create within each of our physical hosts an environment where students could run multiple operating systems and effectively create you know, a secure isolated environment in which they can carry out a range of practical tasks. Now that system worked pretty well. Um, however, in recent years, we've seen a very significant increase in the number of students that uh, take our course. So currently we have, I think, approximately 110 students who are registered on this module. And as those student numbers have increased, it's become increasingly difficult for us to provide those resources in-house. And that's one of the reasons why we looked for an alternative solution. Um, we're also heavily reliant on technical support um, and inevitably there will be times when students will make mistakes, create problems, and we'd end up having then to reconfigure and reinstall all the various virtual machines that we were using in order for the students to conduct their practical work. So it's quite uh, a time consuming uh, and labor intensive process. And one of the great things about MindTap, and I don't want to say too much because I know Gaurav is going to uh, talk to you about what we do now in a minute, but clearly using MindTap has enabled us to reduce our reliance on in-house you know, resources, both software, hardware, and human-based. And that's... Uh, effectively enabled us to focus on what's really important, which is providing our students with the, you know, the experience that they deserve. So I'm going to hand you over now back to Gaurav, who's going to talk you through where we currently are. Thanks very much, Mike. So the move to MindTap was partly circumstantial uh, due to the pandemic. And it was the need for us to be able to deliver labs remotely. Now, 
we used it for the first time last year. And what we found was how easy it was for students to have access to the labs 24 hours a day on demand. So our physical labs that you saw a picture of before, you know, they were heavily utilized um, for very specific modules like networking, you know, operating systems. We would have a limit on the number of modules that you could use it. And the beauty of a system like MindTap is all you need is a browser. And the very first time when me and Mike came across it, I think we had to pinch ourselves a couple of times because this was doing something that we'd done for so many years in a much easier way. As Mike said, it made the maintenance in-house quite easy because we didn't have to rely on our technicians, you know, and also what it did for us. And in the previous uh, picture you saw, we have four what we call specialist labs. So there's the labs which are used by our computer science students and which have specialist software installed on them. By making the move to MindTap and having the browser as the only software that needs to run on a machine, we're able to utilize other lab facilities within the uh, wider university. So here you can see a picture of our students doing the MindTap very complicated lab infrastructure that using a machine, which just needs to have a browser. Now, and the good thing of this was, is that from the module that me and Mike teach, which has a fair number of tutorial groups, we were able to release that capacity for other modules to use as specialist labs. Also, any student who wants to do it at home, all they need is access to a browser. So this really enabled our ability to offer 24 hours education, 24 hours access to resources. So while we have a face-to-face -face lab, which is about two hours long, sometimes students may not be able to finish an activity on time. And other times they might just want to do the activity again, just to reinforce the knowledge that they have. So this ability of delivering labs remotely, which came through COVID now, with the students are doing the labs in their own time and in the labs uh, you know, which we have as well, where we support them. The, the very complex configuration, and you, you'll see a screenshot on the right-hand side, but again, like uh, you know, any technical demo, I'll keep my fingers crossed and we'll see a live demo of MindTab itself, is this complex configuration, which my, me and Mike had created on our physical machines, MindTap is able to deliver that you know, through the cloud. Also, things like Security Plus, networking, programming, these are very much competency-based learning. And having access to real machines where you can do these things reinforces the knowledge that the students have learned. We also have an assessment of a wide range of learning outcomes and which is what MindTap is able to provide us. So, you know, as Mike said, you know, in the lectures that we do, we, we cover a limited part of the curriculum as far as the CompTIA certification is concerned, but also what MindTap is able to give us access to is a wide range of learning outcomes which students can do within the MindTap environment. So I think the next one is for me to do the MindTap demo. So I'm just going to uh, stop my screen in a second. But this works with our pedagogic practice at UEL of preparing students to study something. And that would very much be the lecture slides, which are you know, often recorded, which are available on demand to the students, followed by live Q&A, right? And then the live Q&A, and that is where we engage with the students. They can ask questions about the lecture material. So preparation are the lectures themselves. Then we have the engagement, which is the live Q&A and also the labs that the students do uh, as part of the module. And the last one is consolidation. And you will see uh, in the consolidation section, we make a, you know, a lot of use of MindTap. In the engagement, we use the MindTap for delivering the labs. And the lecture slides, which are provided as part of the MindTap platform, do make uh, Mike and my life easier when it comes to creating the content to accompany the book. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen and hopefully my tab is still open. Right. Okay. So I'll just come out of this. 
right. Uh, Mike, can you just confirm? You can see the mind tap uh, yep. screen. Excellent. Yes, okay. Right. So I won't take you through all the different uh, sections. So what you see over here are the different weeks. And again, from a lecturer's point of view, this makes it very useful because you know, as our module runs for 12 weeks. So we assign the different uh, you know, uh, topics to the different modules. And again, mind tap gives you the flexibility of changing things so whether you want it to be topic based or to be week based now mike and i are quite uh, pedantic about these things so again to help us we like the idea of having the weeks and what you can see uh mind tap, and again this was not something that we came up with and again it's this mind taps again philosophy pedagogic practice also about learning it studying it and applying it so if i just open up one of the tabs over here you can see so the reading, and these are all materials over and above what we do in the lecture itself. So as I said, with the, uh, with the lecture, we have the two hours of uh, you know, the lecture and the live Q&A and the labs that accompany us. And this is the richness that comes to the MindTap platform is you know, the, the videos that you have, which again reinforces the topic that was taught um, you know, uh, during the lecture itself. Also, there's some podcasts. And so that is what we you know, use as the learning it. And this is what students are able to do within their own time. After that, you have study it. And here, these are the links to the uh, lecture slides themselves. But also what you have are the flashcards. And these are very useful for students when they're trying to prepare for the certification. Because the certification you know, is a multiple choice uh, you know, questions, but they are quite complicated and need to you know, understand the topic. And that's where the flashcards become very useful for students who are going to take on the certification. Then you have the practice test, right? Which again, helps students work towards a certification as well. And so the learn it and, and study it are the value added materials that the students get over and above what is being you know, taught to them in the classroom. And as Mike said, we encourage all our students to take the certification. So, you know, we say to them, the certification which me and Mike are very passionate about is the cherry on the degree that you're going to be getting. And you've already learned all of the material. So there's nothing to stop you from going on to take the certification itself. And apply it is where all the magic happens. And this is where I'll cross my fingers and hope things work. So what you can see is a series of activities which our students will do in the lab supported by us. So the simulation is a simulated environment where students will be doing a certain activity and the system keeps on seeing what the student is doing and marking them. And what you can see over here is when you start finishing an activity, it will mark that activity and give the grades for that activity itself. And I'll come onto a screen where we're able to capture that information. So if I just take one of the different labs over here, so if I just click on the live uh, virtual machine lab. And this is where what you will see happening is a live machine, right? So start assignment because each activity within MindTap is, uh, you know, is graded, right? If you want it to be graded, it can also add towards the person's uh, final uh, marks. So over here, I'm just going to click on start again because I was doing this before. Right, so just click here, yes, and delete. And what you will see on the left hand side are the instructions. And you know, the instructions are very well written. They give you step-by-step -step, uh, instruction on what you have to do. So where the students will click on the next, on the actual activity they have to do. And what you're seeing, ladies and gentlemen, on the right hand side, and as I said, Mike and I had to pinch ourselves, are real machines. So this is a real Windows machine, which is accessible through a browser, right? And you have four of these machines. You have a Kali Linux machine, a Windows 10 machine, a domain controller, and a domain manager. And these are the machines that are set up, which are already pre-configured with the users, with the software, with the tools 
that students would need. And this is what me and Mike had to spend many weekends, many evenings, late nights trying to configure, trying to make these things work. And that is what Mike referred to when he talked about zero administration. And with all of the activities over here, you will notice that it will tell you what is a topology. And this is what it comes back to is the competency-based learning. And everything that is happening in this activity is being captured by the MindTap platform. And if I just, uh, you know, towards the end of it, in some of uh, in the activity, you'll have to capture a screen. But it's not just mindlessly following instructions. It's also on the left-hand side, giving you the context of what you're trying to do. And there's the other thing as educators, we have to be very careful that we're not just creating a generation of students who can just write commands. They need to understand the context behind the command and what is the application of the knowledge that they're learning. So as you can see, and this is what we meant by zero configuration, zero maintenance, zero overhead. So for any educators out there, if you are looking at uh, you know, using MindTap, the only software you need to install on your machine is a browser, right? And yes, certain browsers behave better than others. And I think uh, you know, while I'm not advocating one particular browser, I would say it works better on Chromium powered browsers because again, you know, there might be nuances and installing a browser does not cost student any money. It's not a problem at all. And so we have students who are doing these uh, labs on their very fancy Mac machines. Some of them are doing it on Chromebooks, some of them are doing it in a laptop. And again, it works very well. And the beauty of the MindTap platform is that if I was to close this screen, I can carry on working with the activity at home or in a, in a different place. And so you have this you know, ability to work remotely if you're not able to finish stuff. And there is no sort of, uh, and again, Mike, you can correct me if I'm wrong, you can keep on retaking activities over and over again. And we do encourage students to say, do it once to get an understanding of what you're doing, do it again to reinforce it. And if I take you back two years to when we were doing it in the physical lab, students would have to come back to the lab to see when is the lab available to do that activity. And they can do this. I, I won't use the frivolous phrase of on, on a tube journey. I think you need to be sat quite comfortably to be doing these things, but you can do it at home at any time. Right? And that is what we encourage our students to do all the time. So that is the, as I said, the mind tab demo and what you will see over here and apologies, I cannot share all of the thing, but I have some screenshots where as an educator, I can see how my learners are performing. So I can see you know, how well they're doing if they're not completing certain tasks. MindTab is able to integrate with your virtual learning environment. So if you uh, so choose, you can have the marks being fed back to the virtual learning environment. As I said, for me and Mike, this is the second iteration of us using MindTap. And you know, as we get more and more familiar, more and more comfortable, we're going to be uh, you know, using the platform uh, you know, a lot more. So I'm just going to come back over here and just going to stop sharing and just talk about a little bit more um, about our use of MindTap. So just give me a second, please. Right, so as you can see, uh, with the current use of MindTap, and so what you're seeing on the right-hand side is a brag status that me and Mike developed to try and see how our different students are doing. And we are using the grading capability of MindTap. Now, it would be very time-consuming for me and Mike to go through the 120 students that we have. So we're using the grading capability of MindTap to do a RAG status for our students to see where some people might not be doing certain activities where some students might need to repeat certain activities. So, you know, we're using, you know, we're using the tool of MindTap to help us with our own, uh, you know, sort of how uh, people are doing things. On the left-hand side, if you can just see the small screenshot, it again tells you from a student's viewpoint, 
how many assignments have they done, what still remains to be, you know, remains to be done as well. And on the right hand side, as I said, it ties back to the UEL pedagogy of preparing, engaging, consolidating. Now, one of the things that MindTab does, so besides the lab activity, which is very hands-on, is things which are, again, competency-based, which are virtual labs and quizzes, but also analytical things. And as Mike said, this is a level six module. So in level six, you're meant to be doing critical thinking. It's one of the requirements of a final year module. So students are asked to do certain tasks and what uh, you know, Mike and I have done as part of the coursework, we use a combination of the critical thinking activity of MindTap and the competency-based you know, feature of MindTap to create an assessment that is fit for purpose. So it is not just you've done the series of tasks or write a five page essay on a, you know, on a security issue. We're using a combination of both of them to ensure that our students have both the competency, the hands-on skills, but also the ability to think critically as well. And this works you know, with the integration with the lectures, with the pedagogic practice that I mentioned before. So future plans, and this is what me and Mike uh, have planned to do. So what we found last year is that hundreds to, so all the students who engage with the module or who engage with MindTap successfully completed the module. We saw an average mark increase of 7% over the previous year, which made our adoption of MindTap very successful. And that is why you know, we are here talking about it. So as a lecturer, we did see you know, an increase in the grades that the students achieved as part of MindTap. While we cannot relate it directly to it, but both Mike and I feel that it is through the engagement, through the activities, through the, all the various bits and pieces that MindTap makes available to the students, rather than just a set of lecture slides and lab sheets, would have engaged students a lot more. We're going to try and gamify it. So you saw the RAG status that we had in the previous ones. I don't know whether me and Mike have enough vouchers in a pocket or you know, sort of goodies to give away, but we want to gamify it to ensure the students get motivated to do some of the activities on time. And also, as Mike said, is to bring the Security Plus certification. So we are a CAP Academy, but however, one of the challenges of certification to bring it within a module itself is the logistics involved in delivering it. So, you know, and we just need to think about how we can do it. And, you know, we are getting our students prepared. So there's no reason for us, for them, for us not to offer the certification to them as part of the degree. So that was anything else, Mike, you think any other future plans which we haven't discussed yet? Um, not so much future plans, but maybe just a couple of points that I'd like to follow up on. Um, the first one of which is really just clarification. So as part of the, the various labs that the students complete each week and in a typical week, there will be three or four of the labs to complete. So as part of those labs, they have to do two things. They have to, I think, Gaurav, you mentioned this earlier, but they have to submit a, a screenshot or an, a series of screenshots, which are essentially evidence of having completed a, a task within the lab. But at, in addition to that, at the end of the lab itself, they take a test. Uh, and the purpose of the test, obviously, is, is to test their understanding of what they've just done. Uh, and immediately they complete the lab they get a score. So it's instant feedback, which is great. But the other thing that I think it's important to understand is that that whole process is automated. And for that, us, that's a real lifesaver. When you've got 110 students, you know, we would really struggle if we had to mark every single one of the labs that they do. So the fact that it's automated really, really helps. All we need to do effectively is to collect up the marks and put them in a spreadsheet. So that's the first thing to note. Uh, the second thing I would say is that, uh, and again, this relates to the issue of assessment. One of the many things I like about MindTap is, is the fact that it enables us <clears throat> to assess a much wider range of learning outcomes that than we would otherwise have been able to do using more traditional approaches like a, a written exam, for example. So for every single one of the 11 modules, that the students take, 
there is, uh, as I say, th three or four labs in some case, and each one of those is assessed. And so that we're seeing evidence, uh, and again, it goes back to this issue of competency. We're seeing evidence of competence across a very wide range of uh, learning outcomes. And I think that's extremely important because I think at the end of the day, what employers want to know is, are your students able to do these things? Just being able to talk about digital certificates, et cetera, you know, isn't good enough. What they actually need to be able to do is to create digital certificates, create certificate authorities, show how digital certificates are actually used in practice, and, and MindTap allows them to do that. Thank you. Thanks, Meg. And just one and think a question, James, that may come up is, and again, I'm just preempting it, is what is the value that we add if everything is automated? And I think the value is so when we do the labs, we don't just tell the students to start the labs on their own. We give them an understanding of what that lab activity is. So as I said, it is about understanding what you're doing, not just following a series of instructions. Now, if you're offering a module in a fully remote manner, you might choose to you know, record some of these activities as well. But I think the value of us as an educator is to set the context and to make the students understand what is this lab activity about, and then we let them get on with the activity. And once they finish the activity, we ask them to reflect on what was done before, right? And, and it is this interaction, I think, is where educators still play a role in the use of MindTap, rather than it just being a task, which is you know, a tool that students can just use on their own without any input from you know, educators or academics. That was all from us, James. Uh, so just passing it back to you. I'm just going to stop the screen share. Thank you, Gaurav and Mike. That was a very comprehensive overview of uh, MindTap and its use at the University of East London. Um, I'm just going to reshare my screen. And as things stand, there's no, there's no questions in the Q&A, but I invite anyone to ask and post any questions or raise their hand if they wish to do so now. No, we seen. Oh, here we, go. we have one. Um, I think this is directed at you, uh, Mike and Gaurav. How do you ensure there's equity when this requires access to devices and being online? Mike, do you want to answer Shall that? I, I, yeah, go for it. Yeah, uh, I mean that, that's a very good question. I mean, clearly, um, students will not be able to participate if they don't have. You know, uh, a network connect, uh, you know, reliable network connection and um, a device with a browser. I mean, um, and last year, uh, this when we were working remotely, this was an issue for some of our students. So, I mean, obviously, the, uh, there's a limit to what we can do in terms of helping students with unreliable network connections, but certainly. Um, when it comes to the devices themselves, uh, what we did do uh, uh, is loan students laptops if they're in situations where they didn't have one at home. Uh, and we lent out a significant number last year. This year, um, it's slightly less of an issue because the vast majority of students uh, are now back on campus. So the lab sessions are actually in uh, our labs. We still have a small number of students who, for a variety of reasons, because maybe they've tested positive, they're self-isolating, or maybe if they're international students, they have to quarantine, um, are operating, are still working remotely. So the same uh, you know, situation applies as last year. If they don't have the necessary um, equipment, you know, laptop, then we are in a position to loan them. So I'm fairly confident, no, I'm not, I'm, I am fully confident that every student uh, has been able to pass, participate and nobody's being disadvantaged by uh, the move towards MindTap. I suppose another benefit, Mike, is that, uh, as you mentioned before, 
the fact that the, the mind tap can be done on any machine. Our library at UEL is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, yep. which means the students, if they don't have any equipment at home, they're able to come and, uh, you know, they're able to uh, use that over here, right? So, which is uh, quite uh, good. And um, yeah, so, so hence, I think it's not been an issue uh, as much. Um, James, I can see another question about uh, student onboarding process. Yeah, Shall would I? You, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, sure. Would you like uh, to address that? Sure, not a problem. And again, what I would say, and both Mike and me felt, don't throw your students at it, right? So both, you know, for this module, we spent one week, uh, is that right, Mike? Where we actually yes. did the onboarding? The first while, week. The first week. So while it may look very straightforward to us, you know, as educators and people who got many years of computing education, I think it's worth spending at least a week for, you know, at least one of the sessions to get students to be onboarded, for them to understand what is it, you know, what is the purpose of, uh, of MindTap, right? So, uh, yeah, that would be something quite, uh, quite good. Uh, and also during that week, we asked them all to undertake a, a, a pre-assessment pre test, if that's the right word, but essentially there, there's a test uh, on, available on MindTap, which is designed to you know, test their understanding of the subject matter before they start uh, the module. And I think that proved to be very useful because it helped to set the scene, provided some context, and it's also a reference point. So at the end of the module, they can go back uh, and have a look at that test and see how much value MindTap has added to the process. Thank you, Mike. Right. There's a question from Alex asking about whether it's, uh, can be used with the LMS Blackboard. I'll answer that. So yes, it, yes, it can be, and with the other major ones as well, like um, Moodle and Canvas and um, other major learning management systems. Um, what I'll do is post the link to further information online in the chats. But um, if you require further information, you're more than welcome to um, approach one of our digital learning consultants. So unless there's any, any, any other questions, I think we'll um, finish, finish off there. Um, thank you, Mike and Gaurav. That was an uh, excellent session, I think. And um, thank you all for attending. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank See you. you all. Thank you. Bye-bye.